What's up guys, it's Alex and Lindsay, and today we're talking about food from Peru. So you might not know that Peru is one of the culinary destinations of the world. It's won a bunch of awards, and we had the chance to try a lot of them. So we spent seven months in Peru, and we compiled a list of the best foods you guys have to try while visiting there. So let's get into it. Okay, so our first one is gonna be Lomo Saltado. So we have this many, many, many times. It's just one of the dishes that you see all over Peru. And it basically consists of a marinated beef, like a steak, with fries. You'll find onions in there and sometimes some peppers. And some rice. Some rice. Rice with like a soy sauce. And this was one of our favorite dishes. Yeah, it's amazing. Definitely probably my favorite dish in Peru. It sounds simple, but it actually is really good. And sometimes they'll switch up the meat. So sometimes you can try alpaca mm. or a different kind of meat instead of always being beef. So you'll love it. Definitely try that one. Numero dos, aji de gallina. Mm. Also one of our favorites. So the gallina, that actually means chicken. So it's chicken and it comes with this yellow sauce. We actually had the chance to make this and cook it in the back of the kitchen while we were in Cusco, which was awesome. It became a favorite dish of ours. So the sauce is made with the actual ahi pepper and it is so amazing the flavor it gives. It's a little bit of spice, but not in like a hot spicy way, just flavorful. So it comes with a rice, it comes with hard boiled egg, I think sometimes, and then olives as kind of like a garnish. So number three is papa a la huancaena. So this is made with papas, potatoes. So you have a potato or two sitting there, which is usually sliced up. You have that yellow sauce of ahi pepper that we were just talking about. And then again, you'll have like a hard boiled egg or slices of it and some olives. And it's all usually put on top of a piece of lettuce. And ahi de gallina is usually served as more of an appetizer, whereas the two we just mentioned are more of a main course. It's served cold too. When you look at this, you probably think that it's a hot dish because it's potatoes in a sauce, <laughs> but the Peruvians <laughs> like when some of these dishes are cold. We came to find out. Number four is pollo a la brasa. They have this everywhere in Peru. You can't miss it. It is very similar to a rotisserie chicken. That's what we would call it here in the United States but it tends to have a lot more spices and flavor than your average rotisserie chicken would. It also comes with a lot of different sauces, so don't miss out on those. This is probably the dish that you will find more than any other dish in Peru. At least we spent most of our time in Cusco, and when you're there, you'll find all these shops that pretty <laughs> much only sell pollo a la brasa. So it's the rotisserie chicken, and it almost always comes with papas fritas, or french fries on the side. Mm -hmm. So again, a very, very simple meal, but you could have it all the time. So number five, one of my favorites, and it's not even actually a food. Number five is pisco sour. Mm. So this is like the national alcoholic drink of Peru. So the pisco sour, it's made with pisco, that's the alcohol, and it's actually a Peruvian brandy. And along with that, it has some lime, some limon, and some egg yolk so you get like this frothy milky top to it and they're just really good i like to say it's like the margarita of peru just because it seems like a similar thing but it's so good and you mostly only find them in peru we had both never had one before we went to peru and then we had a ton <laughs> while we were there and i even made it myself one day so they serve the traditional pisco sour, but you can also try different mm. flavors. Like they have maracuya. What else? We tried... Um... Uh, we had a coca sour before. Yes. So made with coca leaves, which is big in Peru. We had like a, a eucalypto, mm -hmm. a eucalyptus one. So but... you can try a lot of different flavors. It's fun to mix it up, but we found we really like the maracuya sour. The traditional mm. pisco sour is really good too. All right, number six is cuy, which is guinea pig. This is a delicacy in Peru. They tend to eat guinea pig on special occasions. I personally didn't try this one, but Alex tried it. And basically it's like a roasted guinea pig. And the thing is, usually when they serve it, they tend to serve it as a whole guinea pig. So you see the face, you see the mm -hmm. teeth and all of that. It tastes a little bit like chicken, not quite, but I don't really know what to say 
uh, what kind of meat that it would be similar to so that you know. You just have to try it when you go to Peru because it's just something you do. Yeah, if you want a cultural and unique experience, definitely try the cooey. They actually raise them in their homes a lot of times. You'll see a bunch mm. of guinea pigs running around or in <laughs> restaurants. So just a lot different. Next is chicha morada. This is a very popular drink in Peru. It is a purple corn drink. So they make it by boiling purple corn. You're gonna have apples, pineapple, and cinnamon. sugar and cinnamon, clove. And you boil that all together and then they typically serve it cold, which is really good. But the first time we made it, we had it hot and that was good as well. <laughs> yeah. But you'll find that they'll serve this at a lot of restaurants when you eat. You'll almost always be able to get a chicha morada, kind of as if you were getting like a juice anywhere else in the world or a soda. They will serve that at a lot of places. So that was always yeah. good because it's supposedly healthy as well and has benefits as well as being really tasty. That was one of our favorites, for sure. Okay, the last one was chicha morada. That brings us right into chicha, which is much different. So chicha is a fermented corn beer. So there's a little bit of alcohol in it. People kind of use it as a beer to drink to get drunk or sometimes just to drink because they like it. You'll find chicharias and picanterias all over Peru. It's where you see a little stick with a bag coming out. If you <laughs> see that red bag there, that means you can go inside and you can get yourself some chicha. So you can use it as kind of like a, a bar experience where you can start drinking or just have it with your lunch or something if it's a picanteria, which means they sell food as well. And it's pretty interesting because sometimes these will be right in the Peruvian's home, so you'll get a cultural experience as well. You can get a big cup of chicha for like 25 cents, so pretty fun. That's one of the best things about it is how cheap it is. You can stop whenever you want. Um, and sometimes they'll ferment it with strawberries and other different flavors, and that's called a frutillada. All right, so one of our favorites, it's more about the experience than the food itself, and that is pachamanca. So pachamanca means earth pot. So it means that because the food is cooked underground in a hole. So usually they'll put meat, they'll put potatoes, maybe other kinds of vegetables under the ground in a hole, and then they'll cover it with some herbs, some grasses, some tarps, and they'll leave it under there. They'll leave it in the earth cooking for about an hour. Then they'll dig it up, unearth it, and serve it to you, and it's ready. So this is a really interesting cultural experience that you're not gonna wanna miss. Like Alex said, the food is good, but it's nothing that spectacular. It's more about the experience itself. The food, it requires a lot of work to cook it this way. So you'll never find this anywhere else. Peru is the place to do it. This might be one of the only times that you ever eat a meal cooked underground right before your eyes. So make sure that you find a way to get Pachamanca while you're in Peru. Ask around. They're always doing it somewhere, especially in the region around Cusco and the Sacred Valley. Mm -hmm. So it'll be one of your favorite experiences for sure. So Pachamanca. It's not Pachamama, which you'll hear people saying, which means Mother Earth. It's Pachamanca. Okay, the next one is alpaca. This is just a meat, so you can have it in a variety of ways, but the first way that we tried it was in a burger. They actually make alpaca burgers. And so, so we couldn't really figure out what kind of meat it tasted most similar to, but it had a very familiar taste. And then we finally decided that it tastes kind of like a ground turkey. When we had it in the form of an alpaca burger patty, it resembled the turkey burger the most. Yeah, but when we had it different ways, like when it just seemed like kind of like a steak on a mm -hmm. plate, it didn't taste like that at all. Uh, I don't know what it would be like really, closer to a beef, but a little more gamey than that. We enjoyed it in the steak form the best. It was pretty tender and delicious. One time we had it in this other form, which is the next thing that we're gonna bring up. So the next one is anticuchos. This is an organ meat, so it's commonly used. So it's commonly made by using cow's heart or liver on a skewer. So it's best served when it's fresh and hot. We tried it when it was kind of cold because we got it delivery style and it wasn't that great. We tried it when it was hot 
and it was a lot better. Still not really our favorite thing, if we're being honest, but it's worth a try. You should try it when you're in Peru if you're into that kind of thing because the locals do have anticuchos. They like it, it's kind of a delicacy. It's a good meal that they have. With that, I just wanna backtrack a little bit to the last one. We actually had alpaca anticuchos. So we had like the skewers, the kebab sticks with alpaca heart. It was something that somebody offered to us one time. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have ordered that usually, but they gave it to us, so we tried it and it had a lot of flavor. Okay, and the next one is chifa. So chifa isn't actually one food, it's kind of a variety of food. It's the Peruvian Chinese food. So there's kind of a mix there, which makes this really awesome Chinese takeout that people really love in Peru. So we had this several times and it was always good. It's something that you should try. You'll see it all over. It's in Lima, it's in Cusco. And probably even little towns might have some chifas too. Yeah, so if you're really wanting some Chinese or some Asian food, then you just look for the signs that say chifa. Another thing you can't miss is you need to try the fruit juices from the markets. So they serve mm. all sorts of juices. You can tell them what kind of fruits or even vegetables that you want mixed in. And they're super cheap, healthy, delicious, and it's just a fun experience. Okay, the next one is ceviche. So ceviche, Peru is pretty much known for, and especially Lima, the capital, they are known for amazing ceviche, and I think that's probably one of the reasons that Peru has become a culinary destination, because of their ceviche, and it's so good. The problem here is that we never tried it. <laughs> I tried it once. We should well, have tried it more. Yeah, I never tried it because I don't really like seafood. I also do not really like cilantro and that's pretty much what it is, seafood and cilantro in a cup. Uh, and Lindsay had one once that was like a, an avocado vegetarian, vegetarian version, ceviche. so kind of different. Yeah, there's all sorts of varieties of it, but a lot of times it's raw fish, cilantro, onion. I don't know, I could have it wrong. We don't eat it a lot, but try it. You gotta try it. If you like seafood, you have to have it because all of our Peruvian subscribers, like you guys, were telling us all the time to have it. I just could not bring myself to. But if you like it, if you like seafood, you will love it. Yes. Another popular food in Peru is salchi papas. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's hot dogs and french fries. A lot of times people add different sauces, like mayo, I think, but... It's not healthy, but it tastes good. <laughs> Yeah, so at its core, it seems to be like <laughs> sausage or hot dogs mm -hmm. uh, and the fries. But we had it several times where we went to a place that was all about the salty papas. So like salty power was one we went to a couple times. And in those cases, you can get all these different kinds that come with different meats and different things thrown into it. <laughs> cheeses, mayonnaise, sauces, and all of that. Another popular thing to consume in Peru is coca leaves. You will see these all over Peru, especially in Cusco though, because Cusco's at high altitude and coca leaves are known for helping with altitude sickness, among other things. They help with energy and a lot of people chew them. They chew them in their cheek for, what, 10 to 20 minutes and it's supposed to give you a burst of energy. A lot of the farmers will chew these coca leaves and it helps get them through the day. Mm. And don't get it mixed up with cocaine. Of course, you can make that with the coca leaves, but it's it's a process which involves a lot of things. So it's not really cocaine at all. You're not doing cocaine if you chew some coca leaves, so don't worry. It's legal. So mm -hmm. It's legal. So when you chew the coca leaves, you get like a buzz from it, kind of similar to maybe a cup of coffee. So you'll see people doing that all over Peru. We did it several times, like if we were going on a hike, because somehow don't really know the scientific process about it, but it does help with hiking, with breathing mm -hmm. during, uh, when you're up at high elevation. So we did it a few times for that, a few times for energy instead of coffee in the morning. So it's a pretty cool thing to do while you're in Peru because it's legal, because it's a cultural, traditional thing to do for a thousand years or more they've been doing that. So that leads us into the next one really quick, which is just coca tea, which is using the leaves in your tea. And that's just something that we started having all the time when we were in Peru. That was just, it's just an easier way to consume it. It so tastes that you don't a lot have, better. 
Yeah, it tasted pretty good once you started having it a lot, and it's just a good way to wake up in the morning. If you're not a coffee drinker, maybe you'll be a coca tea drinker while you're in Peru. <laughs> okay, our next one is the local fruits. So this isn't just one food, but all of the fruit. Peru has a lot of amazing fruits, just like all of South America, so you'll find things that you won't find in other parts of the world. We got really used to having granadilla, um, what other fruits did we really like? Maracuya, mm -hmm. that's passion fruit, it's very popular there. Uh, chirimoya. Tuna fruit. Tuna fruit, yeah. And the other great thing is their fruits are all organic. So even the mandarin oranges taste way different there than they do <laughs> where we're from. Yeah, we started becoming obsessed with the little mandarin oranges, kind of like the cuties of the U.S. And once we got back to the U.S., we would grab a bag of those, and we just didn't like them nearly as much as in Peru. We don't even eat them anymore. But in Peru, it was a daily thing for mm -hmm. a while. So yeah, the quality of the fruit is great in Peru. Mangoes are good. Try Papaya. them all. Just try them all. They're super cheap, and it's kind of a fun experience just to try them all. The next one is fried cheese. So there are actually a variety of cheeses in Peru, and some of them are really good, especially the fried cheeses. The first time we really experienced this was on the side of a road in a small town in the middle of nowhere, really. We had some fried cheese with a meal, and it was awesome. So we started ordering that uh, from then on whenever we could with a breakfast. And something about the frying process of their cheeses one of them was just so good. It changes the flavor of the cheese completely. Yeah. If you have cheese in Peru alone, it's not that spectacular in our opinion, but when you fry it, it's good. Next is Inca Cola. Mm. Definitely something you cannot miss. It is a bright yellow soda. You will see it all over Peru. And when a lot of people try it for the first time, they say it tastes like bubble gum but a lot of the Peruvians say they do not think it tastes like bubble gum at all. It's very sweet. It's served in Peru, kind of like what our equivalent would be to a Coca-Cola. So very popular, very loved by Peruvians. <laughs> Maybe try it a few times, because the first time I tried it, I didn't really know what to think. I thought it was too sweet, like the bubble gum flavor, but as I started to drink it more, it really grew on me and I started to really become fond of it. And you're really gonna wanna get used to it because some of the places that you go to eat, you will have no other choice. They'll only serve Inca Cola. They won't have any other sodas or anything else. Sometimes not even water. So if you go out and get like a Pollo a la Braza, mm -hmm. you'll have Inca Cola as your only choice or nothing. <laughs> so get used to it. And make sure you drink it very, very cold or on ice. It tastes way better than if it's served like lukewarm. Don't do that. <laughs> Peruvians will tell you that. Yeah. If you have it warm, they'll get mad at <laughs> we you. We learned the hard way. <laughs> okay, the next one is chicharron. So you'll find this on the sides of the roads. You'll find them at the picanterias when you go through looking for chicha. And it's a pork, like a, a fried pork. And a lot of times it'll come on a plate with some corn or what they call mote. And then some kind of salad. I think it usually came with like a mint, some onions, something like that. Uh, so you'll get this at the picanterias. And so the best part about the chicharron, I think why it's popular, is because it's a really crispy outside with like a, almost a gooey, <laughs> not gooey. No. So I think why it's popular is because it has like this really crispy outside. It kind of makes it like, like a fried chicken. And it has a lot of flavor on the outside, whatever they do with it. So yeah, really good. Next thing is emolente. It is <laughs> an interesting one for the list. It's a hot herbal tea that sometimes has barley in it. Uh, they use a variety of herbs, just kind of depends what they want to put in there. We tried it from a street cart and we weren't the biggest fan. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is we didn't know what it was. So it looked very bright, like they put like a red, almost like a grenadine looking thing in there. So we thought it was gonna be very sweet, more like a sweet soda type of drink. And then it did not taste like that at all. We had to find out later yeah. that it's actually meant to be like a healthy It's thing. like a medicinal tea, but also some taste better than others from what we've heard. So maybe we just didn't have a good one, but it's cheap, worth trying for the experience. Maybe you'll love it more than we did. 
Next is the menu. So the menu is basically a daily special at restaurants that's super cheap and delicious. So don't confuse it with the menu. The menu is the traditional menu that shows all the different foods they offer. But the menu is the special of the day. Oftentimes it's served with a soup, main course, and maybe a drink or dessert. So if you want to be like the locals, you should get the menu. There's a reason they do this. The value is there for the menu versus usually what else is on the menu. <laughs> so <laughs> if you get something else, chances are you're going to get less food and you're going to pay twice as much, three times as much. With the menu, you get a lot of food. And if you're sitting at a restaurant, chances are you'll be around other locals that are eating those things. So be like them. They're doing it for a reason. And it's just a fun opportunity to try a few different things instead of just ordering one thing. You're in a new country, so you got to try all the different foods that they have. So a good example of this is the first time I ordered the menu. Once I figured out what it was, I was amazed by it. <laughs> and I got a quinoa soup. I would have never ordered this normally by itself, but it was delicious and it was a cheap way to try three or four different things at once. And it was funny because a lot of times we would see these locals eating all these amazing dishes and we're like, what is that that they ordered? Well, all along I think they were ordering the menu because everyone in the restaurant had the same thing. We just didn't know what it was at the time. Mm -hmm. So learn from our mistake, try the menu right away. That's a pro tip because it took us probably months. three months of being in Peru before we realized that the menu was not just a menu. Because and it's spelled the same way. Yeah, and so if, if you're a tourist that's there only for two or three weeks visiting Peru, you might never even know. Mm -hmm. uh, so take it from us, <laughs> do it right from the beginning. Next, we're going to get into a dessert, picarones. These are basically like deep fried donuts. That's what they taste like, but it's deep fried squash or sweet potato. They're crispy on the outside and you dip them in a syrup. They are mm. delicious. We love them. Next is a seafood, trucha frita, which is fried trout. You're gonna see this in so many places you go. If you like seafood, you should definitely try it. And it's supposed to be some of the best trout you'll find in the world. So, can't miss that. The next one is lacuma ice cream. This is a very popular one amongst Peruvians. It's, uh, lacuma is a traditional fruit to Peru and Ecuador. So they use it in a lot of desserts, in particular ice cream. So when you see like a light orange ice cream or a light orange even in other things, uh, usually it'll be lucuma when you're in Peru. The next one is arroz chaufa. So this is also a chifa. It's basically a fried rice. So if you're familiar with fried rice, it's rice with like a soy sauce. You'll probably have chicken in there and then some, a little bit of vegetables. So like a chicken fried rice that you might find in the US or somewhere else. It's just one of those chifa dishes that you'll find more often. Uh, you'll find it at places that are serving pollo a la brasa and other Peruvian foods. You still might find a roast jaufa, whereas you won't find other chifas just strewn throughout the other restaurants and foods. So the next one, again, this isn't quite a food. It's a drink, but it's the chilcano. The chilcano is, again, pisco. Pisco, the Peruvian brandy, and ginger ale. So that's just another popular drink that they have in Peru. So try Pisco Sour, try Chilcano. And lime, right? They put lime in it. And lime, of course, it's yes. It's delicious, very refreshing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is Causa Reina. This is one of the most beautiful foods to look at in Peru. So you'll see a lot of times it's this spiral effect where you have the mashed potatoes spiraling around and then you have a layer of chicken or tuna, like a shredded chicken in there. And I guess there's like a sauce, there's sometimes some other things, but those are kind of the main ingredients of it. And that is also served cold, like we told you Peruvians like some of their dishes cold. Okay, the next one, this is something I fell in love with personally, and it's maca, maca powder. So maca is a root, and they form it into a powder, and it's kind of like a supplement with health benefits. You can put it in your water, put it in other things, but I started just doing like a spoonful of it in my water in the morning, 
again, it, it comes with a variety of benefits. Like it gives you energy so you can use it instead of coffee. Yeah, so we're just gonna look at this really quick. So it can increase libido, <laughs> boost your energy, increase fertility, increase your mood, reduce blood pressure. Reduce and, erectile dysfunction. A uh -huh. lot of sex health benefits from it. Yeah. So it doesn't taste great at all, but it's more so if you wanna be healthy, if you wanna try this, it's a thing you can try. Okay, next is quinoa. This is a superfood. It has a multitude of benefits. It is very popular in Peru and originally came from Peru, but it is starting to be more popular around the world. Uh, it's basically used kind of like a rice. Um, it doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's healthy. So it's actually a plant protein. So it's basically like a plant. It has protein, which you don't really find that that much in the natural world. You get protein from cheeses and meats and things like that. So this one is actually beneficial in a lot of ways. It's really healthy. So if you're vegetarian or vegan or something like that, you can have quinoa and get all your protein from it. So pretty cool. I've been having it for years and I didn't know that it originated in Peru. So that's pretty cool. So really quickly, this isn't quite just one food again, but it's the sauces. Peru has some amazing sauces. So their ahi sauce, again, made with the ahi pepper, a little bit spicy, kind of this creamy yellow sauce. And they use the ahi in the huancaena sauce, which is another one that we started having a lot. And it's just amazing. It's just a sauce <laughs> that when you have it, you're gonna want it every day. Another one that we started getting a lot was the uchucuta sauce. And that is kind of a spicy, reddish, creamy sauce. Uh -huh. And you can put that on a lot of different things. And so anyway, Peru knows how to do sauces right. So you've got to try some of the sauces. When you get your lomo saltados, your salchi papas, your pollo alabrazas, a lot of times they can come with sauces if you want them. You got to try them even when you think you might not want them. So that completes our list for this video. There may have been some more things that we missed, but we think we covered most of it. And luckily food in Peru is pretty cheap, so you should be able to try all these different things. Make sure to let us know if we missed some foods because we know we did. We tried a tremendous amount of things while we were in Peru and we didn't put everything on this list. Mm -hmm. Plus there were some things we never got to try. Uh, so let us know in the comments, especially if you're Peruvian and you know, let us know the foods that we missed in the comments and maybe we'll get to do another video about it in the future when we get to try the rest. We hope this video is helpful. Thank you so much for watching and we are going to be making more Peru videos, the best things to do, how to travel Peru, so stay tuned for those. And if you want to watch all of our Peru videos, then click here because we made a ton while we were there and we'll be going back, so we'll show you more. So if you found this video helpful, which we hope that you did, please like this video and leave a comment below. It really helps us out a lot. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.